Okay, welcome back to Infant Investors, the home for all new and non-investors. I'm Curtis and today we're going to talk about the 50-30-20 rule. Quick poll, hands up. Who's heard of the 50-30-20 rule? I'm acting like I can see you. I can't even see you. Put your hands up. Anyway, there is a rule which is basically how you should potentially budget your money and allocate from your net income. So in today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the 50, 30, 20 rule and my feelings around that. I'm then going to give you my own personal financial rules in terms of what money you should allocate where. And finally, I'm going to give you my own personal financial story about a situation that happened in my career, which is going to help answer some of the questions that I expect some of you guys to have when I give you my financial rules because I know that when I say my financial rule you're going to be doing your little scooby-doo moment like Rrr? like really like and so I'm just going to put that story out there which hopefully will set the scene nicely in terms of why I've got the rules that I've got so if you want to hear my rules if you want to hear my stories and if you want to hear my thoughts on the 50 30 20 rule like comment subscribe help the channel get to 5k we can get the world of investing out to more people in a clear simple and transparent manner but first before i get into that what prompted me to look into the 50 30 20 rule is quite simple there was two simple things and so one of my good friends good 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 friends basically a brother to me called me the other day and was like look Curtis um basically lo long story short you know he's not going to mind me telling you this because I'm not going to give you his name and you don't really know my name or much about me anyway so it is what it is but he basically said um that he's lost his job um and because of this whole corona situation so his company he was on a decent salary decent job central London and his company basically said you know he has to go and even with the government support of the 80 percent um they're unable to do that for him because his division is considered non-essential or whatever and so obviously now he is you know jobless at the moment and it got me just looking around you know what the potential jobless figures are and obviously there is a forecast which is basically here i'll leave the link in the description which basically talks about a million people in the uk could lose their job due to the coronavirus outbreak and um, that's fine, obviously, well, it's not fine, but obviously, I think it's kind of expected and it's kind of anticipated. But the thing that bothered me the most about the conversation with my boy was basically the fact that he's got no savings. Now, that bothered me because he's had a good job for some time. And so for me, the issue was we need to start getting serious about money, people. Like, seriously, we really, really need to got, start getting serious about money. There's no excuse now anymore in 2021, 2022, 2030, whatever year from now on, with all of the resources we have available, with all of the different ways we can earn passive income streams, with the different, you know, tools that we have at our disposal, we need to stop getting into situations where basically we're left with absolutely nothing and where a situation like losing your job could, you know, I'm not going to say life or death, but can literally threaten, you know, everything financially for you. So I started to look about budgeting. I've already done a video on how to create a budget planner. So if you are thinking about, you know, budgeting, um, I will put the link in the description of how to create your own budget planner. You know, it's another video that doesn't really haven't got that many views. I'm hoping because most of you guys have a budget plan. But anyway, this is my personal budget planner and you guys can use that. And, you know, hopefully I feel that's going to help you. But yeah, it got me looking into different ways that people talk about budget. And so the topic of the 50, 30, 20 rule came up. And so in this example, Elizabeth Warren, you may remember the name. This is the woman that was actually running for, you know, well, she's running to be, you know, the leader of the Democratic Party and eventually try and run for president. She's got a rule called the 50 to 30 20 rule. It's widely understood, but I think she basically incepted it. And the gist of it basically goes like this 50% of your money goes to your needs, needs being groceries, housing, utilities, health insurance, car payments you know, minimum payment on a credit card, stuff that you absolutely have to pay on a monthly basis. 30% goes to your wants, which is like shopping, dining out, Netflix, gym, getting your hair did, nails did, everything did. 
that's what 30% is meant to go to and then 20% goes to your savings and also if you are let's say you have more money than a minimum payment you need to pay on your credit card then basically the difference will go in the savings column effectively so let's say for example i have a credit card and i've got to pay a 75 pound minimum payment every month as an example but let's say this month you know i'm feeling you know i'm feeling risque and i want to put an extra little 25 pound on the credit card that doesn't come out as a need that comes out of the savings and basically the wants column and so my opinion on that is this is terrible this is probably arguably and this is you know a harvard educated you know harvard bankruptcy expert senator from massachusetts time magazine 100 most influential people don't you dare influence my people with something as garbage as this for me personally guys this is terrible this is really really bad this is this couldn't be any worse than it can never, you might as well just say spend 100 percent of your money that's how bad this is because i just don't understand how you can have a target state and what i mean by target state budget plan which which is what you should aspire to do which basically says spend more on dining out and hobbies than you save and invest like that alone for me is just it's, it's just painfully bad but you know whatever i then thought you know what let me try and actually play with some of the numbers look it looks like someone's using my spreadsheet anonymous loris shout out to you and so i thought you know what let me have a look so obviously i'm from london the average salary in london is thirty six thousand. listen if you're not from london i checked the average salary in england is twenty nine thousand. so it's not that much different anyway and so let's say you're paying a three percent pension you're paying your national insurance you're also paying a student loan um plan and one um, from when you went to university, your net income will roughly work out to be 2,134, give or take, you know, depending on pension, national insurance, and obviously student loan um, contributions and so forth. So if we're taking Elizabeth Warren's 50, 30, 20 rule into effect, we're basically saying that 1,067 you'll be spending on your needs, 640 pounds you'll be spending on Netflix, gym, and getting your hair and your toenails did, and and 426 pounds you'll be spending on savings and investments now if you're basically doing that you know i obviously advocate for you guys having uh, a three to six month emergency fund an emergency fund being everything that you have to spend to basically keep the lights on and keep your keep your stuff moving smoothly forward in case you're ever made redundant just like my bro did then obviously that would basically be your emergency fund. So in this instance, a person would basically need, the average person from London would basically need £3,201 as an emergency fund with based off her amount that you're saving, providing you had no other things to do with that money, it would take you seven and a half months to save just for your emergency fund, seven and a half months. So basically, you know, 55% of the year would just be going towards saving enough to get your emergency fund in a position at the minimum. And I and I advocate three to six months. So ideally you'd want six months if you could, but that would take you, you know what I mean, 14 months to do so. So obviously in this context, the average person in the UK to get their decent emergency fund of three months in case they were ever made redundant and with the amount that they're spending in this current budget plan would basically take seven and a half months to do so which for me is just it's it's difficult man it's difficult and and then i looked at it and i thought let me actually break down what the average person in london might be spending money on so they might have a mortgage or rent i just put the figure of 600 pounds you know this could be as big or as small um as it could ever be just depending on where you are in london you know if you have your own house if you rent a room if you flat share if you've got a studio if you live with your parents like obviously it could be you know as big as 1500 as small as nothing so obviously i've just taken 600 as a as a sort of stab in the dark then i thought you know what you might have to pay council tax you might have to pay some form of insurance of some kind maybe um home insurance contents insurance uh, maybe car insurance it could be anything but i just thought insurance i'm going to put 20 quid even though if it was car insurance obviously it'll be a lot more but i just thought let me just put 20 quid because i was thinking of home insurance at the time utilities 100 pounds travel to work let's say you work in central london and you live in zone four zone five 
maybe zone six or whatever, then obviously it's gonna be quite expensive to get into zone one. So I'll just put 300 pounds. It's probably a little bit more now, but anyway, 300 pounds. And then groceries, so your food shopping just to survive and maintain, I put 150 pounds. But again, that just depends on the person. Me personally, I spend so much money on food. Like food for me, it's a madness. It's a madness. So obviously that could be a lot more for me where I might then save on say travel to work or something else, etc., etc. But even when I did that, which I think is fairly reasonable assumptions, fairly reasonable, I don't think they're too crazy, I think they're actually a little bit sound, that's a 12.50, that's actually 12.50 in, in order, so that's even more than the 50% in your needs, so the way I would basically see it is that you would need to actually have, say, 60% going to all your needs to cover it, and then you'd have to then reduce your wants to about 20, and in that instance, that's what would be able to help you you know cover the what I would consider a basic needs for a basic Londoner and in that context it would actually then take you nine months to save for just your emergency fund so you haven't really got time to be thinking about you know saving for Bali saving for you know the Seychelles saving for some exotic place around the world or saving for a car or saving for a house or you know investing in Tesla or whatever it is you want to invest in you ain't got the time to be thinking about all of that because that's nine months solidly on focusing on just saving for your emergency fund, which for me personally is standard procedure. Like when I say standard procedure, I mean standard procedure. Like you have to be saving for an emergency fund before you do any of the other stuff, in my personal opinion anyway. So I just thought, you know what? And listen, you can start to say, well, what if you earn more? I can put 5,000, it doesn't really matter because it's all percentages. Ultimately, if you if you spend 5,000, you need to be 3,000 in this instance, and it's still gonna be nine months, and you're, still, you're gonna need a 9,000 emergency fund because you know, let's say you are on 5,000 net and you want a good salary, it's gonna hurt a lot more if you lose your job. And you know, maybe you can walk into another job in a month's time, maybe you can't because the whole economy is bad. Anyway, you gotta start thinking about all of these different situations um and it just basically i'll leave all of the links in the description including where i got the average salary here from payscale but it just basically had me thinking that you know what this 30 50 30 20 rule for me makes absolute no sense i think we're encouraging people to spend money frivolously and not actually save for the future and listen i have got nothing wrong with people spending money spend your money how you please but just have your ducks in a row before you go and do so is basically the way that i look at it also it's all about trying for me to how can you reduce your needs as much as possible and how can you reduce your wants as much as possible so that you can put more into this blue column into the savings column which is really important so i have my own rule being the smart you know debonair suave intellectually savvy no, i'm joking being the person that i am i've got my own rules um on you know how to save financially and what to basically allocate because for me personally it's really really important that you know to be realistic and one, you've got to be realistic because everyone is in different situations. So obviously I'm trying to make sure that I don't put something across that only caters to a small minority of people. But at the same time, it's having something to aspire to because the way that I see the 50, 30, 20 rule is when the average person lands on that article, they're going to see that as, you know, Elizabeth Warren, Harvard, Time Magazine, top 100 most influential she tells me to spend you know 50 percent and 30 percent and save 20 percent i'm gonna do that and that's the target state which for me personally that could be a starting point but it most certainly isn't the target state so for me personally i have three different plans it's like you know you're I don't know, buying a service or whatever, you've got different plans and recommended plans or whatnot. Anyway, for me, the standard thing that if, you know, in you're in a modest situation, you're in a, just a regular financial situation for me, is that you should be looking at 70, 20, 10. That's personally my rule. So that's basically 70% going into spending. And that's me being a little bit more, me, me being a little bit more realistic in terms of the cost of living and how things are a little bit more expensive um, than what was outlined before. And so obviously when I did the new assumptions, it showed you 60% as an example, if I just you know go back, but really and truly I would say, let's say 70%, 70 spent, 70% 70 to cover all of your expenses, 
we should be saving 20% into cash. So that 20% will obviously go towards building up your emergency fund or let's say you've already got your emergency fund and you're just building cash and then 10% to invest. Now, obviously, this only applies if you've got an emergency fund and everything there already in place. If you haven't already done this, then obviously this doesn't apply and consider everything going into savings and just being a simple 70-30. But for me, if you've got all of it in place, then I would be saying 70-20-10. And the reason why as well is because when the market is going down with your 10%, when things are into the red it's not going to hurt as much when you know you have a certain amount saved in cash now i do understand people will be saying okay you know what inflation is going to be higher than your cash savings amount etc or the rate that you'll basically be getting on your savings yes that's true but also if you are new to investing then potentially you could lose money anyway by you know making potentially the wrong investment decisions and you can always flip between the two depending on how much you've got this but this for me is like the standard basic amount then if you've got everything patterned and everything's good and everything's calm, it's all rosy, then I would say, you know, you elevate into what I think is the smart way to manage your money. And that is 50% spending. So similar to the Elizabeth Warren, but rather than 50% and she split out wants and needs, I'm not splitting now. I'm saying 50% on spending, full stop. Whether you want it, whether you need it, 50% on spending entirely still say 20% however the difference that you are not spending now you are moving that money into in your investing columns and now you are increasing your investing you're going from investing 10% to investing 30% and you maintain your savings so here again you're a little bit more well versed in the market hopefully you've got a little bit more money at your disposal and now you'll be investing a little bit more and obviously you'll be you know reducing the amount of your expenses I often say to you guys you know your biggest obviously wealth generating tool is your income but also the best way to have money is to reduce your expenses sometimes you can try and increase your money in, in different ways but you can always find ways to potentially cut back your expenses in some way shape or form then the super way to do things which is for me obviously the aggressive way but this is this is what i think people should be trying to target towards and when i say target i don't mean doing this within a month doing this within a year i'm talking you know maybe in 10 years time this is what you're doing maybe in 15 years time maybe in seven and a half years time you know over a period of time it doesn't have to be instantly maybe once you've built up maybe once you're married maybe once you i don't know what your situation will be but i'm saying over the long term trying to aim towards getting to a place whereby you're only spending about 30 percent of your money and that is possible look at the amount of people that do the fire movement where they basically you know they save about 70 percent of their income there's so much people that's doing the fire movement at the moment so that is what a lot of people are doing and that for me is definitely a great aim to be trying to achieve you're still saving 20 percent i don't think your saving should really change in this instance i think 20 percent should always remain constant throughout but obviously now you are investing 50 percent so you now you're investing 20 percent more from the smart and you're going to 50%. Now, I know some of you will be thinking, Rrr? like, how on earth are you going to live off 30%? So let me give you a story. There was one time, little Curtis was, you know, he had a job. He had a job. And it's not when I was working in the bank. It was actually after the bank. He had a job. And let me just tell you, I was wavy at this job. I was so good. Like, I was incredible. Like, I was incredible. I'm not going to lie to you, man. We're just going to take a moment just to appreciate how good I was at what I did. I was so good that I got promoted three times within a space of about 18 months, maybe 20 months. I got promoted about three times. And so come round to the next time when they do appraisals and they're looking for people to promote and whatnot. I knew I was in the running. Everyone was like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, yeah. I was like, yeah, it's like work. Don't worry about that, man. Let me just let me just do my thing and just slide through or whatnot. Come to the meeting and then they were like, oh, you know, back in um, February the 14th that, you know, you came in at 9.01 and, you know, you were showing real positive signs, but you came in at 9.01. So, you know, we think we're just uh, not going to promote you for the next year. I was like, sorry, what? Are you, are, are you kidding me? Are you, so you're trying to, so basically they just tried to just give me the shaft and not promote me again. I don't know if they received complaint. I don't know what they tried to do, but basically they decided that 
it's not worth me getting a little promotion and rare, rare, rare. And I was on an okay salary, decent salary, I would say, but obviously, like, you know, I wasn't a millionaire or like multi millionaire or whatever, whatever, but I, wasn't, I don't even know why I'm even saying those terms. I was even a thousand there, but I was, I was all right in it. I was calm. Now, I was like, I was so annoyed with them. I was like, I'm leaving. Like, I'm not going to stay if I'm not going to be valued or whatever, whatever. I'm just going to leave. So basically, I started applying for jobs. Started applying for jobs, and then one guy called me. And I was sitting in my house and I got a phone call. I got a phone call. I was like, hello. And he's like, is that is that Curtis? I was like, yeah, it's Curtis. Who's this? And then he was like, oh, it's, a, it's Darren, mate, from a... I'm not going to say the name of the company. And he was like, I just saw your CV, mate. And honestly, mate, it's effing blinding. And you're going to you're gonna just be, listen, I just want to have a talk to you about your experience. And, you know, let's see if, uh, you know, potentially there's a role or an opportunity yet here for you. So I was like, all right, cool. Let's have a, let's have a little chin whack, you know what I mean? Let's have a little chat. So me and Darren were talking on the phone for a good, I'm going to say about an hour and 10 minutes like that's how long we were talking it was a very 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 good conversation and at the end so Darren was like okay so let me just do a bit of the admin pieces before we get you in for a face-to-face so he's like oh so what's your current salary and uh you know what salary are you looking for so I told him my current salary which was accurately what my current salary was and he was like huh and I was like yeah that's my salary and I'm looking for this he's like what He's like, oh, what? Are you joking? Are, are you kidding me? And I was like, no, that's my salary. And he was just like, uh, okay, bye. Brrr. And the phone just literally ended within like within like a minute. Like literally, God is my witness. He got off the phone so quickly after I told him my current salary. So basically, the assumption that I've got is that my salary was so low, he really didn't believe that I was you know, doing all of the things that basically I put in my CV, which was obviously the case. So I was getting these promotions, but, and I was getting a bit more money, but it wasn't, it wasn't like industry standard in terms of what I should basically be getting. And so I was like, okay, so I don't like my job no more. They're not, they're not valuing me. And when I'm applying for jobs, they're basically not giving me what I should be, or at least even bringing me in because they're thinking that I'm lying and because the salary is not good enough or whatever, whatever. So, you know what? I was like, I've just got to mark up my salary. So I started applying for more jobs. I marked up my salary by about 70%. Because I was like, obviously, Darren thinks that I'm lying. So I'm just going to say I, I get 70% more. So had a couple more interviews. I told them my salary was 70% more than it actually was. Got offered a job. And they basically gave me 100% more. Within one job change, I doubled my money in terms of my salary. I doubled my salary. And so that gave me more of an ability to spend less and obviously to save more, you know. And at that time, I weren't investing into the market anyway, so I was just saving. So that investing didn't really exist as a concept to me, but effectively saving obviously did. And so it gave me the opportunity to basically do that. And so I talked to a lot of you guys and even a lot of my friends, and I'm just like, look, if your job doesn't value you, because some people think, you know what, you can only reduce your expenses down to a certain point. After that, you know, you can't do much. And I get that. I do understand there is only a certain point. But the other lever you can pull is obviously getting more money. And if you're not going to get a second job or passive income or whatever, then obviously you need to change jobs in order to get more money. And me personally, I'm not loyal to any company. And I've said that before and I'll say that again. I don't care if any prospective employer is listening to this, whatever. I'm not loyal to nobody because at the end of the day, the purpose is when it's time to make you redundant, when things are bad, when the finances are bad, you're going to be quick to go. So same way that you're going, I'm going to be quick to go and I'm only used to help you get, you know, whatever your business goals are, I'm going to use you in the exact same way. And that's basically the way that I see it. If your job is not looking after you, it's time for you to leave, mark up your salary, apply for new jobs and get a new job straight away. And that's as simple as that. Some of you are like, oh, you know what, but my salary, you know, my job, if I get, if I pay 3% to my pension, they give me 6%, forget 6%. Like you can get a hundred percent just by skipping your job. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, and then get another 6% on top of that, depending on what company you go to. Ultimately, you have to be in control of, you know, your destiny and what's going on. And, you know, in the case of my friend, obviously he's now going to be looking and whatnot, whatnot, but he has obviously less of a bargaining position because of the situation that he's currently in. And for me, 
obviously the fact that he doesn't have, you know, the savings in order to basically ride through the situation, that for me is just something that I felt convicted to obviously share with you guys and tell you that, you know, this is the way that I personally feel is a much more intelligent way to manage your financial situation than obviously what's basically being put out there. So yeah, listen, this for me is my rule. This is my own 50, 30, 20 rule. And I think that this column here, the smart column is what everyone should basically be aiming for. Um, but I think you guys should be trying to do this as standard. And obviously if you are able to do this comfortably, then you know you should be working towards trying to do something like this. So that if any situation does occur, you guys are patterned, you guys are taken care of, and there's nothing for you guys to worry about. And ultimately, if your job is not valuing you or giving you what you deserve, then it's time to move B, it's time to move to another job where they're potentially gonna value you a little bit more so that you can do that. If obviously you're self-employed, then obviously it's gonna be a different kind of situation there. But if you are employed, then obviously it's something that you know you should be definitely looking at, you know, trying to fix and trying to save just to make sure that if something was to happen, you know, you guys are taken care of. Listen, I rambled on for long enough. Hopefully you found this video useful. Check out the budget planner. If you haven't already got a budget planner, I will leave the link in the description. Go and check that out. And um, yeah, hopefully you found that useful. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you next time with another investment video. Peace.